SpaceX CEO Elon Musk once claimed that his biggest concern is to get people to Mars before he dies. He elaborated on his extremely ambitious plans to establish a sustainable settlement on Mars as follows. A thousand starships will be needed to create a sustainable Mars city as the planets align only once every two years. That is why he hastened the production of rockets, but most importantly, the rocket's engines. And despite its complexity, SpaceX is developing the Raptor 2 engine at ludicrous speed. But what makes the Raptor 2 engine so superior to other engines? Why can't SpaceX just use another company's engine? That way, they won't have to spend so much time on creating their own engine, wouldn't you say? Let's figure out why in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It could be said that the development process of SpaceX's Raptor engine in itself is an engineering miracle within the industry. Its speed and frequent iterations are beyond the reach of competitors. According to the February Starship update, SpaceX now only needs 24 hours to create one Raptor 2 engine. This rate is more than twice as fast compared to Raptor 1's production speed. Making a lot of engines, we're, we're close to achieving um, one ra a Raptor 2 uh, every day production rate, so, so seven a week. Um. With that crazy rate, SpaceX's Raptor 2 is outperforming other rocket engines globally. If you need proof, well, Blue Origin, needless to say, doesn't even have a working engine yet. Yes, their BE-4 has been delayed several times now putting their client ULA in a very tough spot because their launch system relies on Blue Origin's BE-4 engines. Speaking of ULA, it doesn't even have any competitive edge over SpaceX in this particular aspect as it has never attempted to develop a rocket engine since 2006. And although the speed of Russian missile production is unknown, we are sure it cannot pass this 24-hour mark. But anyways, it's too late. SpaceX is in a league of its own. But the real question here is how does SpaceX build their engines so fast? Well, first and foremost, they're simplifying the design. Raptor 2 is still a methane liquid oxygen engine. But that is where the similarities between it and other methane liquid oxygen engines end. According to Musk's latest update, the Raptor 2 is about 20% more thrust and 20% less mass than the Raptor 1, but focus has been heavily on production rate and reliability. Mass, thrust, and ISP will all improve as will production rate, reliability, and cost. For better clarification, let's take a closer look at the Raptor 2. First off, the turbo machinery has been entirely replaced with a more simple and powerful unit. This means more fuel can be fired into the engine. The combustion chamber, nozzle, and electronics have also been completely reworked to make the most of this additional fuel. Raptor 2s are also welded together, effectively reducing the number of components that are needed. In addition, the Raptor 2's pre-burner controls are no longer spread all over the engine like it was back on the Raptor 1, and are instead in their own box. This simplification makes manufacturing easier and means that the shroud could be removed, allowing for more movement in gimbling engines. But it doesn't just stop there. Thanks to Raptor 2's simplicity, it can be relaunched within an hour, compared to Raptor 1's, which require several weeks in between launches. This simplicity also means that the Raptor 2 costs half as much to manufacture as the Raptor 1. Another key to SpaceX's ability to produce so quickly lies in its obsession with processes. Every single step of the manufacturing process is as optimized as the world's greatest engineers can possibly make it. Even 10 years ago, SpaceX had specialized machines that were essentially 3D printers. You could specify the shape of a tube and no matter how complicated it was, this machine will perfectly replicate it over and over again. 
With Raptor 2 engine manufacturing, this became faster because the design was made as lean as possible. This technology is a hallmark of all of Musk's companies. Another example is the Tesla Gigapress. They have the largest die casting machine in the world, being able to cast a single underbody piece. This eliminates 300 parts and dramatically speeds up assembly time. For example, Giga Shanghai has a production capacity of almost 20,000 vehicles per week. And although that may sound unbelievable, well, you better believe it. This idea is applied to every step of the rocket engine, including the engines themselves. Musk himself is also a decisive factor in this process. The president and chief operating officer of SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, who's worked with the iconic entrepreneur for more than a decade and a half, shared her experience, in which she says it is tough, but it's also inspiring. He's funny, and fundamentally, without him saying anything, he drives you to do your best work. He doesn't have to say a word, you just want to do great work, said Shotwell. He pushes his teams to work on ambitious schedules. There's no question that Elon is very aggressive on his timelines, but frankly, that drives us to do things better and faster. The last reason is related to SpaceX's philosophy of treating every failure as a compulsory step. During an interview for a 2005 article in Fast Company, the founder of SpaceX gave what has become one of his most enduring quotes. There's a silly notion that failure is not an option at NASA, Musk said. Failure is an option here. If things are not failing, you are not innovating enough. Under this approach to the design of Raptor, there will undoubtedly be more accidents. But SpaceX is willing to tolerate some failure to go fast. With iterative design, the company builds Raptors, tests them, and flies them as quickly as possible. This approach strongly contrasts with more traditional aerospace, in which years are spent refining a vehicle's design before building the vehicle. This typically results in fewer explosions, but requires a lot more time and funding. You could say SpaceX is good at fly, test, fail, fix. The willingness to fail is something that NASA has lacked for a very long time, but it's what enables SpaceX to move so fast, to rapidly iterate and improve, as they say. Musk revealed plans for a dedicated Raptor engine factory on July 10th, shortly after showing off an impressive group of at least 10 qualified Raptor engines staged inside a production tent at SpaceX's Boca Chica Starship factory. If all goes according to plan, that facility could also become the highest output rocket factory ever built, churning out hundreds of Raptor engines each year to outfit a vast interplanetary fleet of starships. As Musk said, this is the only way to make life multi-planetary and extend consciousness into the void. Well, there you have it. Today's episode has come to an end. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, take care and have a good one.